All right, folks, I'm ready to show off my David Bowie catalog that I have on vinyl. I don't have everything yet. There's about three albums that I have still that I want to get to finish my official collection. Now, all that, I'm trying to focus on mostly all the studio albums. He does have one album before this one. It's his first album, and it's just called David Bowie. It came out in 1967, and I do have, want to get that one. But this is kind of his first, I guess, semi-famous album. I don't know if it was really that famous when it first came out. And this is the RCA uh, packaging with the Space Oddity theme to it, making it reflect the Ziggy Stardust era. My copy is a Ryko Disc version. These came out in the early 90s. And I actually bought them then when CDs were the thing. And the back shows you the original cover which many times now it will still have what I call the Bilbo Baggins hair going. The second one is his second or third album, The Man Who Sold the World. The original American copy had the cover that I think is on the back here where he's kicking his legs up in the air. This is also Ryko Disc. But I like the British cover when he's in drag which I think looks really great. Copy of Hunky Dory is not a Ryko disc. This is a current reissue where they took the RCA symbol, the old RCA symbol, and made it say Bowie. I have several of these, and this one's really nice. My Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. I bought this back in the 90s. It's the double Ryko disc clear vinyl version. Then at some point, <coughs> I was out shopping for records and I bought several of these picture discs. These are his 10th anniversary. So they're now, what, I think they're probably about 30 years old, maybe something like that. I do have the picture disc for Aladdin Sane. And up on my wall is my cover for my Aladdin Sane. This is the new reissue, that same RCA that looks like Bowie. I would really like to have that on Ryko Disc, but they've gotten so expensive. My copy of Diamond Dogs is a current new version. It has that same Bowie RCA, but what I like about the, it has the unedited um, picture because we can't show dog genitals apparently. Those are considered immoral. My pinups is an original or an early pressing. Uh, this is an, it has the real RCA label. And it's a Dynaflex copy, if you want to look that up, the super flexible vinyl. I have the picture disc of pinups. I have an original version of Young Americans. It's on RCA. Station to Station is one of the current copies on that same, the where they've taken the RCA and turned it to look like Bowie. And that's true of my version of Low. Logger, yeah, that's the name of this album. It's on RCA. I always found this cover scary. Because of course he looks like he's being attacked, his nose is broken. One of my absolute favorite Bowie albums, Scary Monsters. This is also an original early pressing on original RCA. A lot of people have this album. This is probably the go-to album. Changes Bowie. Mine looks a little different than a lot of people's. Especially recently, they've gone back to the original cover with just his face in black and white. Mine is a Ryko disc version that came out in the 90s. So it's a double disc on clear vinyl. And this version has more songs on it than even the current version. Speaking of the EMI era, this is when he signed... He, he had been with RCA pretty much his entire career, except for that very first album that we're talking about earlier in 67. So he signed a big record contract with EMI Records and came out with Let's Dance, which for many folk may be one of their most memorable Bowie songs. Uh, Tonight. Some people call this one of his weakest albums. And yeah, in some ways it might not be the most uh, memorable album. But it has the song Loving the Alien on it. Some people think this is probably his worst album, Never Let Me Down. It's definitely more pop than maybe some of the other stuff. 
but I like it. I've always, it, it was one of the first ones I ever bought. Here's a copy of Tin Machine 2. I don't have Tin Machine 1, but I've got it on order. I just paid a lot of money, more than I wanted to, to have a copy of the first Tin Machine album. That's the band that Bowie created back in the early 90s, late 80s. He decided instead of being a solo artist, he wanted to be a member of a band. He did Tin Machine. And this album, Tin Machine 2, is actually the better, in my opinion, of the two albums. So the American version that I have on CD... All the PPs are blurred out. Can't show that. Here's the first one in my new box set that I got. Black Tie White Noise. Now this was his next attempt at making, I guess, a more, more popular mainstream pop album. Although, for Bowie, it's mainstream pop. It has some very radio-friendly sounding songs. And I think this is the very first time it has ever been on vinyl in the United States. And... Another one for my box set is his soundtrack to The Buddha of Suburbia. Um, one soundtrack that I don't have that I forgot to mention a while ago that I think would fall right, right either before or after Never Let Me Down is the soundtrack to The Labyrinth, which a lot of people like. Then he did a concept album called Outside. This album has grown on me. I can't even say now that I think it's just spectacular but I'm not gonna say anything negative about it because a lot of Bowie albums grow on me over time. I love the cover of this, and this is his album, uh, Earthling. And I've, this album has grown and grown and grown on me every time I listen to it. This is an electronic album he did mostly. It doesn't, like I said, mostly electronic music, but it's more on the Nine Inch Nails side, kind of harder kind of stuff but I like it, and I think it's one of his most underrated records. In about the year 1999, he tried to do, I think, a more pop mainstream album called Ours, and some people, once again, don't like it, some people do. I like it, I think it has a lot of wonderful songs on it. That's, that's all the songs that came off that box set I just got. Now, Heathen, I will say Heathen is probably one of his best albums he ever recorded, I mean, even, I'm talking about one of his best albums, even from all the way back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. This album right here is like a pinnacle Bowie album. And I think it was 2007 or 8, he came out with Reality. And a lot of people thought this was going to be his last album. Because it was during this tour that he had the stroke on stage, or the heart attack. And he was basically thought to be incapable for a while of recording, singing, doing anything again. And he came out with The Next Day, which is another spectacular album. Almost as good as Heathen, in my opinion. Really great record. Then, of course, his last album while he was alive came out, Black Star. And it came out just a few days before he died. On his first few days, I think, after his birthday, I might have that wrong, but right around the 1st of January that year, and uh, I think it's been five years now, so uh, this was the last one to come out for him while he was around. After he's died, there's been this album called No Plan, which is more like an EP, I think it only has five or six songs on it, and it, were, it was basically songs he worked on with Black Star. But I will admit that the songs on here, if you think Black, a lot of people bought Black Star because he died, and I think that some people like it, and some people think it's a little, it's definitely more jazzy, which I like because it's different. And he did do some pop type songs that could have been radio friendly, and they kind of fell over here. Hello, Kinko. Yeah, I'm doing a review of Bowie Records. And now, this one has not even officially been released by itself yet. It only comes in the current box set, is Toy. And I don't know if to Toy um, was an album he was going to release. It's some of those 60s songs that he wrote back in that era, re-recorded and reimagined. They don't sound like they're from the 60s. They have a little bit of that feel to them. But uh, they are great. And I've heard this all the way through once. And I like it. It's going to grow on me.